Carnation Evaporated Milk presents a star, Anita Louise, on Stars Over Hollywood. I'm almost afraid to see Christmas come this year, Bill. I've been hoping Judy's face and Santa Claus would carry us through the holidays. But I'm terribly afraid she's lost that face. From Hollywood, California, where the world's favorite stars live and work, the world's favorite evaporated milk brings you stars over Hollywood. Each week, Carnation presents another famous name for motion pictures, television, and radio. Such distinguished performers as David Niven, Ida Lupino, Edmund Gwen. Today, we present one of Hollywood's loveliest stars, Anita Louise. Today's story, Time for Christmas, was transcribed in Hollywood for Carnation, the milk from contented cows. Ladies, when you buy milk, buy wonderful carnation evaporated milk. No other form of milk is so good in so many ways. Carnation. Carnation for cooking. Carnation for coffee. Carnation for baby feeding. Carnation is good whole country fresh cow's milk concentrated to more than double richness through evaporation. Nothing is removed but water. Nothing added but vitamin D. For your coffee, cooking, baby feeding, buy economical Carnation evaporated milk. The all-purpose milk. The milk from contented cows. And be sure to hear Carnation's home service director, Mary Blake, right after the first act of today's story. She has some interesting cooking tips for young brides and for every homemaker interested in making better gravies. <laughs> And now, Act One of Time for Christmas, starring Anita Louise in the role of Laura Phillips. Curtain going up. It was shortly after the holidays last year that Judy Phillips' father died, and Judy and her mother, Laura, moved into the third floor walk-up at 27 Fremont Street. Bill Wharton, superintendent of the ancient apartment building, has been an understanding ally in Laura's effort to help Judy adjust to life without her father. Laura's aware that the holidays will be difficult this year, and there's something in Judy's manner that makes her more and more apprehensive as Christmas approaches. However, at the moment, her attention is on other things. It's Saturday, and Laura's sewing, as usual, and Judy is giving Jasper, her cocker spaniel, an active bath. Get him out of the tub, Judy. Oh, he's so slippery. Well, rinse off the soap and dry him with that towel. This has gone on long enough. I'll never get Mrs. Day's blouse finished at this rate, and she wants it this afternoon. How old is Jasper, Mommy? Well, he'll be a uh, year old Christmas. Can Daddy give him to me? No, darling. Santa brought him. Don't you remember? No. Oh, sure you do. He had a big red ribbon around his neck and a card that said, From Santa to Judy. The card was almost bigger than Jasper. He was so little. I guess I was awful little, too. Well, you're not much bigger now. Yes, I am. Well, darling, you haven't written your letter to Santa yet, have you? No. Well, don't you think you better? Honey, don't let that dog lick your face. Christmas is only four weeks away, you know. Maybe it's too late. Well, of course not. I tell you what, we'll get our letters off tonight, both of us. Mommy, did you ever see Santa riding across the rooftop? Never exactly saw him. I was always asleep. But sometimes, sometimes you can hear him off in the distance. Well, did you ever... No, Jasper, you sit there. Oh, I thought I'd heard him. Come back, Jasper, I told you. Oh, Judy, the dress. I got him, it's all right. Oh, a little more in Miss Bishop's party dress would have been for the rag bag. Here, put his collar on him and his leash. I'll empty the tub. Should I take him down to the furnace room to try? See who that is, Judy, will you? Dear, these bath mats are sopping. Come on, Jasper. Can't I go of you? Hi, Sprite. Hiya, Bill. Are you keeping lions up here now? Whatever happened to that little cocker spaniel you had? I gave him a bath. <laughs> Washed him and now you can't do a thing with him, huh? Hello, Bill. Hi. <laughs> if you can get in over such a shamble. <laughs> oh, this isn't bad, Laura. What if she had a St. Bernard? <laughs> oh, there's Danny. I gotta go. 
Judy, wait a minute. Put Jasper's leash on, as I told you, and take him down to the furnace room. Is that all right, Bill? Oh, sure. I just cleaned it this morning. Do I have to stay with him? Well, he's your dog, if you want to leave him sad and lonely all by himself. Oh, okay, Mommy. I'll stay with him. I'm coming, Sandy. Come on, Jasper. Bye, Mommy. Bye, darling. Take it easy on the stairs. <sighs> the young are so young. <laughs> Will they be all right down there, Bill? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Tate's in the laundry. She'll keep an eye on them. Hmm. Isn't it beautifully quiet all of a sudden? Yeah. And I hate to disturb it, but I have here the Venetian blind you've been waiting for. Shall I put it up for you? I'm sorry, Bill. I didn't even notice. Oh, I'd be very grateful if you'd put it up. I'm sure I couldn't cope with it. Oh, shall I use this chair? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Laura. These darn blinds. Shall I go to the basement? And leave me in these ruins? You'd better not. Here, let me help you. Oh, no, I can manage. You might hold this chair, though. All right. Need a hammer or anything? Nope, nope. Got one right here in my pocket. Bill? Bill, has Judy talked to you about, well, about anything that's worrying her? Oh. Something worrying her? Uh-huh. And I'm afraid it's Christmas. Christmas? Why? Oh, all her Christmases till now have been so exciting and gay and fun. Oh, we'll see that this one is, too, Laura. I'm not sure we can. I've been hoping Judy's faith in Santa Claus would carry us through these holidays and, and that Christmas would still be full of magic for her. Uh, that's the way it should be. I... I think she knows, Bill. I think someone's disillusioned her. Uh, one of these smarty little realists, huh? Well, there's one in every grade. Maybe it's silly. Maybe I put too much importance on it. No, you don't. It is important. Ah, uh, hey. That's done. Oh, thanks. That's a big improvement. All right. We'll do something about Judy. We'll give that kid the best Christmas she's ever had. Let me think about it for a day or two, huh? Oh, Bill, you're such a comfort. You know, Judy looks on you almost like her own father. Oh, I wish I... <laughs> uh, say, when you haven't anything to do, why don't you come down to the shop and help me? I'm fixing up toys for the kids at the Claremore home. All right. Maybe tonight after Judy's asleep. Good. And we'll figure out some plan of action. Uh... Any ideas? Oh, all I've done is talk my head off about my own belief in Santa. Maybe if you pretended to... Bill... What do you mean? I don't have to pretend. I wish I had your certainty. <laughs> Put it on your Christmas list. Bill, do you know about Mommy? Uh, what about her? She believes in Santa. He's going to write him a letter. She even thinks he's real. Well, don't you? No. I've known about it for a long time. It was awful at first. Oh, but you feel all right about it now, huh? Uh-huh. Everybody knows it. Everybody but Mommy. What'll I do? You mean, how can you tell her? Oh, no. I mean, I don't want her to find out. Oh. Well, this is a brand new angle. What can I give her that you'll think Santa brought her? What does she want? I don't know. Well, you said she's going to write a letter to Santa. Uh-huh, that's nice. I said I'd write, too. Well, get a look at her letter or talk to her about it. Find out what she wants uh, Santa to bring her. Then we'll know. All right, and I'll tell you tomorrow. Is that what you've been worrying about, Sprite? Uh-huh. I feel better now. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hi, Laura. I'm sorry I'm so late, Bill. But Judy just couldn't get to sleep. I haven't seen her so excited since... Oh, that fire's beautiful. Here, sit by it for a minute. Huh? I need an intermission. Getting old, I guess. My shoulders ache. You better rest a while and put me to work. I'll have a cigarette, then we'll both get to work. What did you tell Judy, Bill? I didn't tell her anything. Why? Well, you wouldn't believe it. She hasn't a worry in the world. As bright and gay as a bluebird. Couldn't wait to write to Santa Claus. Guess I was all wrong. Now, will you take my word for something, Laura? Almost anything. Well, you needn't be so upset about Judy anymore. Not on any score. She's got her feet on the ground and her head in the stars. You're both very lucky. You deserve each other. You do rather lovely things for my ego, Bill. And apparently for Judy's. You always know when we need it. That's because you and Judy are my favorite people. Well, I guess we'd better get to work, huh? Oh, wait, uh, what about her letter? What did she ask Santa to bring her? Oh, fantastic things, like like a dollhouse. Well, that's and... not fantastic. It isn't? Well, not at all. We'll make it right here in the shop. A better house than Santa would ever make. 
You want it? Oh, that would be wonderful. She'd love it. Bill? Hmm? Why'd you shave off that long white beard? <laughs> Same reason you took off those black shiny boots? <laughs> Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Who shot you out of a gun? Begin again, Sprite. Here, read it. It's a contest. Huh? I read a letter about why I want to turn a watch for Christmas. Only I don't want a watch. I want a cuckoo clock. A, a cuckoo clock? Mommy, I started to bring her one in her letter. She wants it so bad, I put it in my letter, too. You said to find out. Isn't that what you told me, Bill? Well, yeah, but... Well, this contest, Judy, lots of people will write letters. Yeah, but they won't all want cuckoo clocks. No, no, you're right about that. Got some paper, Bill? I'll tell you what to say. Uh, don't you think you'd better give it up, Sprite? Uh, something like this takes a lot of thought. Oh, but I know exactly what to say. All the way home, I made it up. Hmm? Okay. What are you going to tell him? That I want a cuckoo clock for Christmas, because Mommy believes in Santa. And if I win, they can send the clock to you, and I'll give it to Mommy, and she'll know Santa brought it. If she ever found out the truth, it would be awful. <laughs> There we are, Laura. One dollhouse complete. How do you like it? Oh, Bill, it's adorable. And look, you, you just flick this switch. Real life. <laughs> oh, Judy will love it. Yeah, I hope so. Well, better cover it up so she won't see it if she comes in. There we are. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas, Bill. Though I confess I'll be glad when it's here. You look tired, Laura. Judy says you've been working late every night. Why? Now, no questions. You and Judy have a secret. I think I'm entitled to a small one, too. Bill, Bill, Bill! Oh, Mommy, I didn't know you were down here. I'm just leaving, dear. I suppose you and Bill have some more secrets to talk about. Don't stay too long, Judy. I'll have dinner ready soon. Bill, the clock, did it come? No, honey, it, it didn't come. No, I didn't win it. I'm afraid not, Sprite. They announced the winner in tonight's paper. Oh, Mommy's going to know. There won't be any cuckoo clock. Oh, I hate Christmas. And so the curtain falls on the first act of today's Stars of a Hollywood radio drama, Time for Christmas, starring Anita Louise and brought to you by Carnation Evaporated Milk. Before we return to the second act, Let's hear from our authority on foods and cooking, Carnation's Home Service Director, Mary Blake. Mary, I'm uh, sure that both new brides and experienced homemakers in our audience would like to know your secret for failure-proof gravy making. Well, then, starting right now, it's no longer a secret. In the holiday season especially, we all have occasion to make gravy. But, of course, we want it to be good all the time. And believe me, Carnation can really help. Well, then we want to hear all about it, for sure, because this is the time of the year for cream gravies made with chicken and turkey. And speaking as a committee of one for the men, we want it to be good. Of course you do. So, for all the listening wives, here are my own favorite gravy-making tips. First of all, it's important that you use the same amount of turkey or chicken drippings as flour. Then cool the drippings slightly before you combine them with the flour. Next tip? Blend the fat and the flour thoroughly over low heat. Then add carnation evaporated milk mixed with an equal amount of water. All right, blend fat and flour thoroughly over low heat. Add carnation mixed with an equal amount of water. That does the trick, does it? It most certainly does, Art. If you follow those easy rules, you're sure to get the smoothest gravy ever. Just be sure you use smooth, double-rich carnation milk. That'll put an end to any complaints about your turkey or chicken gravy. Well, there you are, ladies. The secret's out. You'll make better gravy always with carnation evaporated milk and with Mary Blake's special gravy-making tips. Take home several cans of carnation evaporated milk. The milk from contented cows. We return now to the second act of Time for Christmas, starring Anita Louise in the role of Laura. Judy Phillips has just discovered that her letter didn't win the cuckoo clock in the contest on which she had built all her Christmas hopes. The cuckoo clock was to have reinforced her mother's belief in Santa Claus, which now, well, 
Judy, in deepest despair, has just reported her utter failure to Bill Wharton, superintendent of the building in which Judy and her mother, Laura, are living. Judy, listen to me, honey. We'll get a cuckoo clock. Nothing's impossible if you believe it hard enough. Oh, Bill, I feel awful. What did it do? I even said a prayer every night. Well, that's what I'm telling you, Sprite. You'll have your clock. We're going to buy one, you and I. Oh, we can. Sure we can. I have a little money and... But I haven't got any. Well, you're going to earn enough to put with mine. Then we'll buy the clock together. You know something? It's good you didn't win that clock. Oh, Bill. Well, that would have been well, just luck. This way you'll be working for it. And when you've really worked for something, it means a lot more. But how can I earn money? By doing errands for people right here in the building. Mailing letters, emptying waste baskets, taking things to the cleaner down the street. Lots of things you can do. I've already talked to some of the tenants. Well, what can I do now? You mean right this minute? Well, uh, you just sit here and catch your breath. Then we'll plan your financial career from now till Christmas Eve. That's when we're going to buy the clock. Oh, golly. Well, what do you think, Sprite? Is that the kind of clock you want? Think your mother will like it? Is there a cuckoo in it? My dear child, we have never sold a cuckoo clock without a cuckoo as long as I've been here, and that's 26 years. Can I see it? Pearl. Such a suspicious child. <laughs> She's a careful shopper, that's all. And she knows what she wants. Uh, show her the cuckoo, please. I'd like to see it myself. Very well, sir. You open this small door, and there it is. Oh, isn't he cute? Well, what do you know? And you know what happens, Bill? He comes out and bows at cuckoo six times when it's six o'clock, and twelve times when it's twelve o'clock. Naturally. What's so naturally about that? I think it's quite spectacular. Phenomenal, even. Right, Judy? Yeah, Maya, love it. We'll take it. Yes, sir. Uh, you got the money, Sprite? Uh-huh, here it is. That will be $38. Golly, we've got $40. We can buy it. That's right. And we'll have some left over for cuckoo seed. Really? Isn't it fun, Bill? <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas, Sprite. Merry, Merry Christmas. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'll put the box right here, Judy, where nobody will see it. And as soon as you can get your mother out of the apartment, call me. I'll stay around where I can hear. All right, Bill. Then we hang it on the wall. Yeah. Now, tell your mother I, uh, I need two bulbs for my Christmas tree. Maybe she'll bring them down, and you call me. All right. Mommy! Oh, a tree! A real Christmas tree, Mommy! Yes, darling. You like it? Golly, it's wonderful. Where'd you get it? Well, where do you suppose? Santa brought it. Oh, candy canes and everything. And all those icicles. Sparkles good, doesn't it? Uh-huh. And so do you, honey. Why don't you take your things off and get warm? I want to take this down to Bill's shop and leave it. It's the scarf I knitted. Oh, he said he wants two bulbs for his tree, Mommy. All right, I'll take along these extras. I'll be right back to you. Don't hurry. I'll just look at the tree. Bill. Shh. Wait till she turns the corner. All right, bring it in, Bill. <sighs> we got to work fast. That's good. This is all ready to hang. We'd never make it if we had to... Bill, it cuckooed. Oh, don't be silly. It couldn't. It's not even on the wall yet. But it did. I heard it. Now, wait a minute, Sprite. We'll take down this picture and use the same nail. There. Now, we push the pendulum like that and set the hands like that. Directions say it may cuckoo any old time at first. Well, didn't you hear it, Bill? Well, I'm not sure. It seemed like it, but... Uh, let's look back here behind the tree... Oh, another cuckoo clock. By golly, you're right. I guess Santa got here first after all. Here, we'll set these hands again. Here comes Mommy. Judy, Bill wasn't in his shop and... Oh, here you are. Uh, uh, something I can do for you, ma'am? No, I just wanted to tell you that we... <laughs> oh, you moved it. I wanted it to be a surprise. Believe me, it was. We didn't move it. It's still there. We got two of them, Mommy. Two cuckoo clocks? Well, where did this one come from? Santa brought it. Yeah, Santa's busier tonight than he's been in years. Doesn't know if he's coming or going. I'll go down and get the dollhouse, Laura. All right, Bill. Where are you going, Bill? Well, uh, not to buy a cuckoo clock. <laughs> oh, darling. You look so bewildered. We should have known this would happen. Why? Well, don't you remember? We both asked Santa to bring us a cuckoo clock. We said if we both asked, we'd be sure to get one. So we got two. That was a fast trip. Bill, you'll have a heart attack. Oh. Hello. Good evening. Are you Judy's mother? Judy, look, it's Santa. Uh, 
Yes, I'm her mother. Dada? Well, ma'am, if you let me step inside for a moment, I've brought you something you've wanted for a long time. Something you asked me for especially this year. Oh, oh yes, of course. Do come in. Bill, where'd you get that outfit? I beg your pardon. All right, I'll play up. If I could trouble you for a hammer, ma'am, I have a nail right here in my pocket, and I'll have this gift hung for you in a jiffy. A real surprise. This gives me more pleasure than... Oh, Mommy, look, a clock. Oh, no, a cuckoo clock. <laughs> Never thought you'd really get one, did you? Old Santa never lets you down, my dear lady, when you really believe in him. Now, the hammer. Oh, oh, yes, I'll get it. Bill, there she's gone. She thinks you're really Santa. Oh, that's all right. Wow, well, look who's here. Did he come down the chimney, Sprite? Bill, you're not him. Huh? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, Bill. Oh, you startled me. Now, 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 stand still, everybody. Let's get this straight. You're Bill. Well, I seem to be the only one who's sure of it. Mm -hmm. Then who are you? Me, ma'am. I'm the Santa Claus you believe in. Came here early this year, so you'd go on believing in me. I'm the old gentleman visits you every year. The old gentleman waiting for the hammer. Oh, sorry. Here. Thanks. Carted this clock clear down from the North Pole. Quite a trick to keep that little bird inside from freezing to death. <laughs> there we are. Now, <clears throat> you just start the pendulum like this. And set the hand. Yes, we, we know. Uh, uh, by the way, Santa, old boy, uh, you left something out in the hall. I'll be glad to bring it in for you as long as you got it this far. What's he talking about? Oh, card says, uh, to Judy. Oh, a dollhouse for me? For you, darling. Well, folks, I wish you a real happy holiday. You sure do like cuckoo clocks. <laughs> and from me and the Graubart Jewelry Store, a Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> good night, good night. Santa. <laughs> and thanks for, for everything. Golly, a real stove. Well, it was in your letter, Judy. And curtains at the window. What'd you say, Bill? <laughs> I said, who dares to say there's no Santa now? <laughs> <laughs> Only the cuckoo. <laughs> they all about that, one for each of us. I think we'd better send two of them back, don't you, Bill? We only need one, really. Well, it would save Santa one stop. Of course. And besides, Judy and I need a private Santa of our own for all the year round. Think I could get the job? I know you could, darling. Oh, Bill. Bill, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful Christmas after all. And so the curtain comes down on the final act of this week's Stars Over Hollywood show as presented by Carnation Evaporated Milk and starring Anita Louise. Before we have news about next week's show, how about a curtain call for our star, Anita Louise? I'd like that very much, Art. Fine, and I think you're going to like our after-the-show custom here, too. You know, following the last curtain each week, we serve coffee, cream to perfection, with Carnation Evaporated Milk. It's ready right now. Mm, thank you. Hmm, what an appealing aroma. Yes, you know, and the taste is even better. Here, try it. Mm, say, this is good. Very good. Well, I can tell you why, Anita. The carnation in it makes a big, big difference. Because carnation evaporated milk is more than double rich. Extra smooth. And, well, let's sum it up by saying it's just exactly what a good cup of coffee needs. You know, there are millions of people who'd back me up on that, Anita. Don't worry about convincing me. I'm already sold, Art. Well, that's mighty good news to us. Well, Anita, as we knew it would be all along, your performance on our starring role today was superb. And until your next visit, here's something to remember us by. A bouquet of red and white carnations, just like those pictured on every can of carnation evaporated milk. Thanks ever so much, Art. And now, if I may, I'd like to remind all your listeners that the annual campaign to sell Christmas seals is now going on. And I most earnestly appeal... For its support to the fullest. It's a way every one of us can fight tuberculosis. So please remember that with the seals you buy to decorate your Christmas packages and greeting cards, you're contributing to a national program to combat TB. Case finding, research, education, and rehabilitation. That deserves our help, doesn't it? I'll say it does. So do everyone. We say, be sure to buy Christmas seals this year. Thanks, and for now, goodbye, Anita Louise. Next Saturday, as a special holiday event, Stars Over Hollywood is privileged to again present, by popular demand, Mr. Edmund Gwen in the perennial favorite, A Christmas Carol. And now, here's Mr. Gwen. Uh, so you'll want tomorrow off, eh, Cratchit? Sure. 
Christmas. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Take it, then. Take it. But be here all the earlier next morning, though. Thank you, Edmund Gwen. We'll all be listening next week to hear you in this heartwarming play. The story on today's Stars Over Hollywood presentation was written by Evelyn Hart. Supporting Anita Louise were John Stevenson, Issa Ashdown, and Stanley Farrar. The program was directed by Don Clark. Ladies, when you shop for groceries today, be sure you buy Carnation, the world's favorite brand of evaporated milk. No other form of milk comes in so handy, so many times, so many ways. It's Carnation time when it's coffee time. It's Carnation time when you're cooking too. It's Carnation time at baby feeding time. The milk from contented cows for you. All around the clock, it's time for Carnation. Grown-ups, teenagers, and little folks all love the wonderful party flavor of Carnation malted milk. Available either in the chocolate flavor or the natural flavor. Both extra delicious and extra nourishing. Carnation malted milk costs less than two cents for each big, generous serving. And you get more than 20 servings from a one-pound jar. Get Carnation malted milk today. And now for the Carnation Company and stars over Hollywood, this is Art Ballinger suggesting that you be sure to see the George Burns and Gracie Allen television show brought to you by Carnation Evaporated Milk. Tune in every Saturday and hear the world's greatest motion picture stars on Stars Over Hollywood. Next Saturday, we're proud to again present Mr. Edmund Gwynn in the Charles Dickens classic, A Christmas Carol. Stay tuned now to hear Fun for All, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Stars Over Hollywood comes to you transcribed from our Hollywood studios and is heard in Canada over the Dominion Network of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the CBS Radio Network.